Right, yeah, so next section I'll take the the chuck stake away from it. As you remember from early on, we've already marked down the bones, we've marked down the backbone, we've marked down here. If this little bit of preparation earlier on will make it easier now. In order to do this, I'm just going to just basically straight across here, go straight across with my knife, put it right in hard and go across. Then it's a matter of just fleecing this back see me doing just fleecing that back as I go. When we get to this section here, that's the end of the rib bones and it's going into the chine bone. It's a matter of just going in and around. You can see as I'm doing that how that's breaking away. Because we marked this properly before, this is just very easily breaking away as I just go in around those rib bones and that chine until we get to the bottom there. Now, there's two ways of going about this. We can now take that straight off there and bone that off on the bench. However, I find it just as easy to bone it off, bone it out while it's hanging up and allow the weight of the meat to pull away from the bone. In order to do that, I'll just make sure we mark down here properly. I put my knife in here and just going around that area like so, you're starting to see the shape of the bone. There's a knob there, then a knob, and then out. We go in, go around, and see how it's going. trying to keep it spun around so that the camera can, can see where I'm going and what I'm doing here. So get down to there, that's the bottom. So there we go. We now have the chuck taken away. That's the full chuck. It's quite large, quite heavy. There's you know, six or seven kilo in this, I suppose, for a small body. See how the neck bone is there? That can be trimmed up a little or it can be sold as meaty neck bones which make beautiful soup bones. Make all the, all the beef stock for your, your jus later on. And uh, of course we'll demonstrate how to trim out and what to do with the chuck later on. It can be used for many things and you see this great big sinew, this thick sinew that holds and directs the head. This sinew, uh, of course, is taken out. It's so tough. However, many years ago, the Chinese used to boil this down and make chewing gum out of it. Uh, so there's very, very, uh, uh, there's very, very, very uses. <laughs> Next thing is, there's only two areas left to go here now. This is to remove the rib cage and then to take the rib fillet out from it. In order to do this, I like to just place a hook just in here. I like to take the remaining bit of this off of here and just hang it up this way. It just makes it very easy for me. Then I like to put my hook in here and I'm just gonna fleece all that meat back until I get it off away from the bone. Can you see what I'm doing there? Just gently going up, no need to go stupid, no need to give yourself cuts, just you're in control of the knife, you're holding it, you're just moving it along, just fleecing that meat out of there. Until we just follow it all the way around, all the way down. I'm getting to the bottom now, I want to be careful here because I want to make sure this, because I'm getting to the bottom now, it's got a lot of weight pulling away here. The weight is pulling away on the root fillet. If, I'm, if I pull down too hard, it can tear a section of the root fillet out and leave it on the bone, which of course 
the boss of the butcher shop is not going to be very impressed with. Okay, so just lightly now, going along here and just right up hard against there. You can see this area here is the beautiful rib fillet steak I was talking about. How we've taken it all out away from the bone, we've left nothing in there. And now the fork order is boned. Because I said that the rib fillet has to be taken away from the rib, because at this point it's just one big piece of meat, I'll just show you where we take this away. I like to take the rib fillet away this way because we get the maximum yield from it. If you turn it over and pull it away from the other way, it's, it comes away cleaner, however, you want to leave a little bit of salvage on the rib fillet in order to get the most maximum price from it. With a tiny little bit of a tail, I just run my knife up there, just lightly, not very hard. Just so, just so that you can find that seam. Once again, it's all about the seam, okay? Then we're just going to run this back this way, just following that seam all the way back this way. All the way back this way. It can mostly be pulled away with just a little nicking in between. We get down here, we're just continually taking that away where it's and there's the rib fillet out of the rib cage. That piece will be rolled for a rib roast. This section here now just has to have this huge tendon taken out of it. We do that just by lightly running our knife down here and it will just pull out. How easy is this? <laughs> this rib fillet would require a tiny little bit of trimming just here just to knock a little bit of that fat out. We don't want to get too rude with our, what we're putting into our prime cut. And that is what I would consider a prime rib fillet ready for sale in a butcher shop with just a tiny little bit of salvage, a little bit of cover on the back, but mostly completely denuded. <laughs> Okay, the very last thing to do now is just to fleece the rest of the trimming off of this off of this um, this frame bone of uh, off of this frame of bones. So what we will do is just take the neck off. Just a matter of going through this joint here. Just go down, cross, and down. As I said, that's pretty clean. However, it can be cleaned up more if you want to trim it out and get a bit of um, prime mint mints. Okay, so we'll just um, trim out the, the rib cage. I'm just going to fleece out the intercostals and get as much trimming off it as we can. You'll be able to use a little bit of this for mints. Mostly we will do it for sausage mints. If you're a bit lazy, you could just leave it and throw it away. However, when you're looking at um, at achieving the maximum yield in a butcher shop situation of course you can't afford to waste anything and we've gone to bone and trim everything out of it. So just along the back here there's just a little bit of a little bit of trimmings that is still there. A little bit here. On this inside there's a bit of lean meat that can come away. inside of the breast we can get a piece off here a little bit here it's getting close turn it back over this way now to fleece these out I just come down here 
around. Uh, and maybe if I do it this way, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. I'm just taking those intercostal from between each rib bone. Okay, sorry, this is getting a bit boring. I'll try and speed this little bit along. I've normally got a board on the table, which I haven't got at this stage, so I'll just pull that over the edge in order to get these little pieces out of here. So I don't want to run my knife against the stainless steel. As old and worn out as it is, such an easy little knife to use this. Um, I don't know, like many older butchers, I suppose, I get to the stage where I get attached to that one knife and I hate to see it go, I hate throwing it away. I hang on to it forever. And uh, however, eventually it has to go, of course. In wrapping up, I would like to hope that this demonstration has been somewhat a help to you. I hope that you, I was able to demonstrate it in a slow and precise way for you to be able to see exactly what's going on, where each cut comes from, how it's taken apart, and I thank you for your patience and your watching this. My pleasure, Michael Cross. <laughs>